Hey everyone, it's me, Carlo Libertini, and thanks for hanging out. In this video, we're going to check out macros here in Studio One 5.5. Now, you may think you know what macros are, but are you using them? I feel they're one of the most underrated advancements in digital audio technology today. I mean, imagine taking a bunch of steps, redundant steps, things you do repeatedly over and over again, and just compartmentalizing them into one simple click. Well, that's what macros can do for you. And I'll show you how to get started. All right, let's take a listen to our session first. If you want these multi-tracks, definitely visit producelikeapro.com. We're going to be working with Pete, Pete Mraz. Hope I'm saying that last name right. The song is Open Your Eyes, and you'll get these tracks in session 26 in the multi-tracks for you to download and try this along with if you need to. Let's take a listen. Have you been to the bottom of the canyon? To the bottom of all alone Did you ever stop to think There's a diamond in the dirt below It's all where you're looking All right, sounds it's great. Great tracks. Beautiful song, great feeling, great emotion. Now in a real world working scenario, we need to edit, we need to mix, we need to affect, we need to bounce, render. All of that could be done and handled seamlessly and elegantly with macros. So I'll show you how to get started. Up here in our main toolbar, here is the macro button right here up in the middle. And if you don't see it, just toggle it on and it gives you the macro arrangement. This is a toolbar. You can justify it to the left, center, or the right if you wanted. And you can even, here's a tip for you, you can even detach the window and you can relocate it anywhere to customize it and conform it to your workflow, okay? So here we have the macro toolbar. Now, this is just one page of what is included, what comes with Studio One. Here to the left, you see it says global with the drop down arrow. If I open that up, you'll see we have one, two, three, four, we have seven pages here. For example, here's a toolbar with customized macros for audio editing. Here's one for music editing. You can see we've got a lot of MIDI applications there. Music creation. Let's go through these. Exploring macros, that's a good one. Podcasting, absolutely. Look at this, undo, redo, recording, restart. I mean, you can already get a sense of how these buttons here, just by selecting them and what they do, undo and re undo recording and restart, just in one button in the podcast page. And track visibility, this is great for hiding tracks, showing tracks and finding tracks. Let's go back to global for a second. All right, now included with these pages are groups. And as I move over to the right, you'll see here's a group. Here's one's called edit. This one's called split, zoom, and global. If I select one, you can see that we can move it to a different page. We can add a new button to create a new macro, which we'll get to, a new menu button, even make a new group or remove the group. All right there by selecting the title, okay? And you can see within those are the macro buttons. For example, here in group, we've got minus one dB, plus one dB. If I select some audio and choose this button, it's gonna increase the level by one decibel. I mean, that's great. Sometimes when you grab clip gain and you look for the little node and you play around with it, but what if I only want one decibel? I can select the audio, press that one macro button, and I know it's gonna be spot on every time. All right? Let's go through some more of these. We've got exploring macros. Here's a great example. Actually, let's try this right now in a real world working scenario. Let's say, let me go to my, here we go. And here's a guitar part. Let's take a listen to it right from about here. Never stop to think there's a diamond in the dirt below. It's, it's a nice little guitar swell. Okay, real world working scenario. Here we go, check this out. I'm going to select this range of audio here you may say to yourself, oh, it's really small. Now I got to zoom in. I got to do this. I got to do that. No. Check it out. Up here in the navigation, here in the Explore Macros page, I can choose Set Loom, zoom, Loop, and Zoom. And look at that. Just like that, that selection is now full screen. And I have a loop marker here, which I can now activate. And it's going to loop just this range of audio where the guitar swell is. Let me solo it. Nice. Now, what can we do with this? Well, let's go back to our audio editing tools. I can increase it, let's say three dBs. I just turned that selection up three decibels. 
it's that easy, literally that easy. And then I can show all if I wanted and zoom back out. Let's take a listen to our work. It's not, all right. To the bottom of all alone. Did you ever stop to think? There's a diamond in the dirt, but did you Sounds ever nicer. stop to think? There's a diamond in the dirt. But Get the loop on there. So now I'm already showing you how to use macros. Now you don't have to jump around from page to page. You can actually create a custom page and literally create custom groups with custom buttons and custom macros for you. And I suggest you definitely try this. This is my first tip for you is don't be afraid. Dive right in. Let's do that. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Next to the Explore Macros here, we've got this gear icon. If I select it, you'll see we have Macro Organizer, which is also accessible. If you're on Windows, it's um, go to Studio One here. If you're on Mac, it'll also be at, on the Studio One menu bar. And go to Macro Organizer. Now, this is amazing. These are all of the possible macros here for us to begin working with. Now, I, I, I think you should explore these because they can help you start thinking about how to create your own. So that's one way to get to the organizer. Let me close this for a second. Let me show you another way. If I was to right click any one of these buttons, I could choose edit macro. And the reason I want to show you this is because it's going to show me what steps right here on the right side. What, what, what we did is we chose these individual ones here from our choices here on the left side. And as you add them, select one, add, it populates here in the order that it's going to be processed with just that one button. Now, what arguments is going to do, it's going to give a specific behavior to a command. So it's even more flexible that way. So by exploring macros, what I mean is you could say, okay, look, add effects, EQ, let me right click on this and choose edit macro because I want to know what's in here. Track, add, insert. Oh, look at this. I can I have a custom macro here that adds a specific EQ and it'll show it in my channel editor for me. So with one button, if I select my track, it'll insert the CQ and have it open for me. That in and of itself can eliminate, you know, several seconds and lots of clicking around. Hopefully you can begin to see the advantages here. All right. So by exploring these, you know, right clicking and editing them and learning about what makes that macro work is a good way to understand how they work. Now back to my organizer here. Let's create something new. Let me go to new. All right, let's have a little bit of fun here. You could search for commands. You know, for example, let's say I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to delete a range. You could select that and choose add and so on. Let's create a brand new fresh macro from the start. Actually, let's, let's do something really cool because I work with a lot of effects and I love the vocals in this mix. Let's call this one uh, vocal chain one. And now we're going to give it a group name. If I was to group this and put this in a group, where would I put it? I would put it in CL, my initial, and vocal chains, just like that. And then, of course, you can give it a brief description. I often would like to, to write what would be in that chain. Uh, for example, if I'm using like FG Dynamics or my favorite other compressors or such. So in the description, it was really handy. I definitely recommend you doing that because it can help you find them when you're trying to weed through all of the potential ones that also come bundled with Studio One as well. All right, so for a description, I would say, let's see, I'll just call it my... My favorite chain, just for now. All right, done. And choose OK. Now, what do we do? Here it is right here. It is now in my macro organizer. Vocal chain one, CL vocal chain, my favorite chain. Select that, choose edit, and look at that. Now, what we're doing is just preparing it. But now what we have to do is create the vocal chain. Let's go to add inserts. Okay, I want to add insert to a selected channel right there. Now I want to double click on this and now it's going to ask me add insert to selected channel by double clicking right here. I want to add a, an effects chain. Now I have effects change created already, but you could do this for anything at all. And under vocals, you can see I've got a couple of my favorite effects chains that I have created here. Here's two of them. Let me choose this one. 
And now if I was go going to go to device, this would allow me to select a specific plugin by itself. But we're going to do a chain here in this example and choose OK. Now, when I trigger vocal chain, it's going to literally instantiate my favorite vocal chain, however many plugins that is. But we want to assign a, key com a keyboard command to that. So let me choose OK. Come up to Studio One, go to Keyboard Shortcuts, and let's see. Let's find my vocal chain. Let's do, let's search vocal, my vocal chain right there. And let's do a keyboard command of Control One, and I'm going to assign it and choose OK. Now what we have here is a vocal chain that's linked to my favorite vocal chain, and we have a keyboard command for it. And we're going to assign that keyboard command now to a, a button in one of our macros. Let's right click here in this area and choose new page, page eight. It automatically just named it page eight for me. And you'll see we have a blank macro bar slate waiting for us to just have fun and create with. I'm going to right click. Sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to choose right here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to choose new group. And then I'm going to click, and now we're going to name that group. Now we don't have any groups here. I'm naming this group. I'm going to call it uh, CL Vocal CL Vocals. Now we got a group here. But what does that mean? There's no buttons. Now I'm going to add a new button. Now with that button, I'm going to choose Assign. And let's assign a macro. And here's this whole list that we could choose. Now, of course, I have to look for my vocal chain. I should have named it 01 something. Let's find this vocal chain. You, look how many come. Here it is, vocal chain one. All right. So you get an idea how easy this is. All right, let's go back to our mix window. And here on our lead vocals, you can see I already have that vocal chain here. Let's remove this vocal chain. And now there's nothing on the vocals at all. To the bottom of all alone. Did you ever stop some to effects. think? There's a diamond in the dirt below. Now, if I want to add my favorite vocal chain to these vocals, watch, all I have to do is select a track. And there it is. That whole chain. I've got channel strip. I've got pro EQ on there. And I've got baby audio tape. Which, by the way, is a great vocal chain. And that is how you can create your own page, start creating your own groups, always name your groups, definitely recommend doing that, and then create buttons, and then assign those buttons to either pre-existing macros that come with Studio One, or just create your own like I showed you from the many possible options available to you. You know, I've worked with a lot of DAWs, and I have never come across one that makes it so elegant and easy to use. Yes, it's an initial setup, but you only do that once. Once you have your customized page set up, for example, your customized groups, or anything at all, and you create your own buttons, it's only done once. And it should be a fun process for you because it's going to help you stay in that creative headspace when you're working. So there you go. There's a look into macros here in Studio One version 5.5. The best way, of course, is to find out for yourself. So dive in, stay busy, and stay creative, everyone. And thank you for watching. Hey, everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.